In this video, we'll explore the intricate anatomy of the paranasal sinuses. We will begin our presentation with an introduction, then delve into the descriptions of the various sinuses, including the maxillary, ethmoidal, frontal, and sphenoidal sinuses. Following this, we will explore their drainage pathways, as well as their clinical correlations. Lastly, we will conclude with key takeaways. The paranasal sinuses are a complex and vital part of our cranial anatomy. These sinuses consist of four symmetrical pairs of air-filled cavities, intricately located within the bones of the face, specifically, the frontal, ethmoidal, sphenoidal, and maxillary bones. Uniquely positioned around the nasal cavity, these sinuses play several essential roles in maintaining our health and well-being. One of their primary functions is lightening the weight of the head, which is a crucial factor in human biomechanics and comfort. The air-filled nature of these cavities significantly reduces the overall density and weight of the skull, facilitating easier movement and reducing the strain on the neck and spine. In addition to structural benefits, the paranasal sinuses are instrumental in conditioning the air we breathe. They contribute to the humidification and heating of inhaled air, ensuring that the air reaching our lungs is at an optimal temperature and moisture level. The sinuses also play a notable role in speech production. They act as resonating chambers, enhancing speech resonance and contributing to the unique timbre of an individual's voice. From a protective standpoint, the paranasal sinuses serve as a crumple zone in the event of facial trauma. They absorb and distribute the impact force, thereby reducing the potential damage to more critical areas such as the brain. Lastly, the paranasal sinuses contribute to immune defense. They are lined with mucous membranes that produce mucus, trapping and eliminating pathogens and debris. This function is part of the body's first line of defense against airborne contaminants and plays a crucial role in maintaining respiratory health. The maxillary sinuses, also known as the antrum of hymor, are a fundamental component of the paranasal sinus system. They hold the distinction of being the largest and most consistently present among the paranasal sinuses. These pneumatic cavities are situated deep within the bodies of the maxillary bones, lending them a unique anatomical position. Each maxillary sinus is located laterally to the nasal cavities and rests beneath the orbits, playing a significant role in the structure and function of the midface. Morphologically, the maxillary sinuses are paired and possess a distinctive pyramid shape, with their base facing medially towards the nasal cavity. This orientation is crucial for their function and interaction with other facial structures. Each sinus comprises five walls and an apex, which further defines its pyramid-like shape. The apex of each maxillary sinus, blunt in form, extends into the zygomatic process of the maxillary bone, highlighting the intricate relationship between the sinus and the facial bones. The base of the maxillary sinus, another critical component, is formed by the inferior part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. The anterior wall, often referred to as the facial wall, aligns with the facial surface of the maxillary bone. This wall is characteristically quadrilateral in shape and exhibits a slight concavity which is not just a structural detail but also has implications for surgical interventions and trauma management. This anterior wall is distinguished by three prominent landmarks, the canine fossa, the infraorbital foramen, and the infraorbital groove. The canine fossa, a depression in the bone, is a crucial landmark in maxillofacial surgery. The infraorbital foramen and groove are significant as they house the infraorbital nerve and artery, critical for sensation and blood supply to the midface. In terms of its borders, the anterior wall is medially bordered by the anterior border of the body of the maxilla. Laterally, it gains additional strength and support from the buttress of the zygomatic bone. Superiorly, the wall is limited by the lower orbital rim, a boundary that demarcates the transition from the sinus to the orbit. Inferiorly, the wall is defined by the alveolar ridge, extending from the canine to the second premolar tooth. This relationship is particularly important in dentistry, as dental procedures in this area can impact the sinus. The superior wall, or the sinus roof, is equally significant. It is formed by the orbital floor, making it a critical area in both sinus and orbital pathologies. This wall contains the infraorbital artery and nerve, which traverse it to enter the infraorbital groove. The presence of these structures makes the superior wall an important consideration in surgeries involving the sinus or the orbit. 
Additionally, the wall is typically thin and fragile, which underscores the need for careful surgical planning and execution to avoid complications such as orbital injury. The posterior wall of the maxillary sinus primarily faces the infratemporal fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa, two significant spaces in the skull. It aligns with the maxillary tuberosity, contributing to the formation of the anterior surface of the pterygopalatine fossa. This close anatomical relationship with the pterygopalatine fossa is of paramount importance, especially considering the fossa's contents, which include critical neurovascular structures. The proximity of these structures to the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus must be carefully considered in surgical procedures involving the sinus or the adjacent areas, as inadvertent damage could lead to serious complications. The inferior wall, commonly known as the sinus floor, is another vital aspect of the maxillary sinus. This wall is formed by the alveolar process of the maxilla, which holds the upper teeth. The relationship between the sinus floor and the teeth is particularly significant in dentistry. The proximity of the tooth roots to the sinus floor can sometimes lead to complications in dental procedures such as tooth extractions or in cases of dental infection spreading to the sinus. Moreover, in some individuals, the roots of the upper teeth can protrude into the sinus cavity, creating a risk of sinus perforation during dental procedures. The medial wall of the maxillary sinus, commonly referred to as the nasal wall, is a critical component of the sinus's anatomy with specific features and clinical importance. This wall has a distinctive rectangular shape and is primarily made of cartilage. One of the primary roles of the medial wall is to separate the maxillary sinus from the nasal cavity. This separation is not just a physical barrier, it plays a significant role in the sinus's health and function. The proximity of the maxillary sinus to the nasal cavity has implications for the spread of infections and other pathologies. A key feature of the medial wall is the maxillary ostium, also known as the maxillary hiatus. This anatomical structure is pivotal for sinus drainage. The ostium serves as a passage through which mucus and secretions from the sinus can drain into the nasal cavity. The proper functioning of the maxillary ostium is essential for maintaining the sinus's health, as blockages or obstructions can lead to sinusitis and other complications. Now, we will delve into the description of the ethmoidal sinuses, often known as the ethmoidal air cells, which represent a unique and complex component of the paranasal sinus system. Unlike the larger, singular cavities of the other sinuses, the ethmoidal sinuses comprise a collection of small, interconnected air cells, which together form a paired air-filled cavity. This distinctive structure contributes significantly to the intricate anatomy of the ethmoid bone, also referred to as the ethmoidal labyrinth. These ethmoidal air cells are strategically positioned within each side of the lateral mass of the ethmoid bone. This location is not only central to the structural integrity of the skull but also plays a vital role in the protection and functioning of adjacent organs. Specifically, the ethmoidal sinuses are situated between two crucial anatomical structures, the orbit and the nasal cavity. This positioning is clinically significant, as diseases or pathologies affecting the ethmoidal sinuses can potentially impact the health and function of the eyes and the nasal passages. The arrangement of the ethmoidal sinuses within the ethmoid labyrinth presents a unique challenge in terms of both diagnosis and treatment of sinus conditions. Their proximity to critical structures like the optic nerve and the brain, and their intricate anatomy make surgical interventions in this area particularly delicate. Conditions such as ethmoid sinusitis or the presence of polyps in the ethmoidal air cells require careful management to avoid complications. Central to these sinuses is the ethmoidal labyrinth, also known as the lateral mass of the ethmoid bone. This structure is composed of numerous thin-walled cellular cavities that form an intricate network within the ethmoid bone, playing a crucial role in both the structural and functional anatomy of the nasal and orbital regions. The ethmoidal labyrinth is uniquely shaped like an irregular rectangular parallelopiped, flattened transversely. This distinctive shape is characterized by a collection of small, air-filled cells, which are not merely structural features but also have significant physiological functions, including the filtration and humidification of inhaled air. The architecture of the labyrinth is further defined by a series of obliquely oriented lamellae, which lie parallel to each other, contributing to its intricate design and functionality. Medially, the ethmoidal labyrinth is integral to the formation of the lateral nasal wall and the nasal turbinates. This relationship is vital for the proper functioning of the nasal cavity, influencing airflow and the filtration process. 
The nasal turbinates, in particular, play a critical role in warming, humidifying, and filtering the air we breathe. Laterally, the labyrinth borders the orbits, forming a part of the medial wall of the orbital cavity. This proximity to the orbits underscores the importance of the ethmoidal sinuses in ocular health and the potential implications of sinus pathology on the eyes. Superiorly, the labyrinth extends towards the floor of the anterior cranial fossa, highlighting its close relationship with the brain. This extension has clinical implications, especially in the context of infections or pathologies that may spread from the sinuses to the cranial cavity. Posteriorly, the ethmoidal labyrinth lies adjacent to the sphenoid bone and sinus. This positioning is significant in understanding the drainage patterns and potential spread of infections or inflammatory processes within the sinuses. The ethmoidal air cells, a critical part of the ethmoidal sinuses, exhibit a fascinating and intricate structure within the paranasal sinus system. These cells are known for their distinctive polygonal shape, which contributes to the formation of a honeycomb like structure within the ethmoid bone. This particular arrangement is not just a structural attribute, it plays a vital role in the functioning of the sinus system, especially in terms of effiltration and humidification. The individual ethmoidal cells interlock with each other, separated by thin bony septa. These septa are crucial as they provide structural integrity to the ethmoid bone while allowing for the necessary flexibility and space for the air cells. The organization and categorization of the ethmoidal air cells are based on their drainage pathways and anatomical positioning, which is essential for understanding their physiological functions and implications in sinus pathologies. These cells are divided into two main groups, anterior and posterior, a separation that is facilitated by the bony basal lamellae. This division is significant not only in terms of anatomical structure but also in the understanding and treatment of ethmoidal sinusitis and other ethmoidal conditions. The anterior ethmoidal air cells drain into the ethmoid infundibulum, a crucial channel that leads to the middle meatus of the nasal cavity. This drainage pathway is important for the normal clearing of mucus and debris from the sinuses. Blockages or obstructions in this pathway can lead to sinus infections and other complications. Conversely, the posterior ethmoidal air cells drain into the sphenoethmoidal recess, an area located in the superior meatus. This distinct drainage pattern for the posterior cells plays a role in how conditions affecting these cells are treated and managed. Concerning the frontal sinuses, which are a significant part of the paranasal sinus system, they are characterized by their unique location and structure. Composed of two separate cavities, there is one frontal sinus located on each side of the midline, symmetrically arranged to ensure a balanced facial structure and function. These sinuses are strategically situated within the frontal bones, positioned just above the orbits and behind the brow ridges. This placement not only contributes to the sinuses' specific physiological roles but also affects their involvement in various pathological conditions. Morphologically, the frontal sinuses are typically pyramidal or triangular in shape, a design that is both structurally efficient and crucial for their function. Each sinus is situated superiorly to the orbits and the nasal cavity, a location that is important for the drainage and health of the sinus. The structure of the frontal sinuses is composed of four distinct walls. The anterior wall, known as the cutaneous wall, this is the outermost wall, facing the skin. It forms the forehead and is often the thickest part of the sinus, providing protection and structural integrity. The posterior wall, known as the cranial wall, this wall faces the cranial cavity and is often thinner than the anterior wall. Its proximity to the brain makes it a critical area in conditions where sinus infection might spread intracranially. The inferior wall represents the floor of the frontal sinus and it is located above the orbits. This placement is significant in surgical procedures as it shares a boundary with the orbital cavity. Lastly, the medial or septal wall, this wall separates the two frontal sinuses and is adjacent to the nasal cavity. It plays a key role in the drainage of the sinuses into the nasal cavity. The frontal sinuses exhibit important anatomical relationships that are essential for understanding their function and significance in both health and disease. Each of these relationships plays a role in the structural integrity of the sinuses, as well as their susceptibility to various pathologies. Anteriorly, the frontal sinuses possess a thick bony wall at their anterior aspect. This wall is externally covered by skin and forms the forehead. The thickness of this wall is vital for protecting the sinuses and the frontal lobe of the brain from external trauma. 
It's the robustness of this anterior wall that often shields the deeper structures from injury in cases of frontal impact. In contrast to the anterior wall, the posterior aspect of the frontal sinuses consists of a thin bony plate. This plate lies adjacent to the dura mater of the frontal lobe. Due to its thinness, this wall is more vulnerable to pathologies that may spread from the sinus to the cranial cavity, such as infections or malignancies. The inferior aspect of the frontal sinuses presents a complex relationship. Laterally, it adjoins the orbit, a crucial consideration in orbital and oculoplastic surgery, as conditions affecting the frontal sinuses can impact the orbit and vice versa. Medially, the inferior wall is contiguous with the ethmoid bone and the frontonasal duct. This contiguous nature is significant for the drainage of the sinus and for the spread of infections between these regions. The medial boundary of each frontal sinus is demarcated by the frontal septum. This septal division plays a role in the symmetry of the sinuses and can vary significantly in thickness and alignment among individuals. Laterally, the frontal sinuses extend to the external orbital process. This lateral boundary is important not only for the structural integrity of the orbit but also in defining the limits for surgical access to the sinuses. Turning to the last of the paranasal sinuses, the sphenoidal sinuses are an integral component of the sinus system, notable for their unique positioning and characteristics. As paired pneumatic cavities, they play a vital role in the overall function and health of the sinus system. One of the key features of the sphenoidal sinuses is their lack of symmetry, which sets them apart from other paranasal sinuses. This asymmetry is primarily due to the uneven separation by the bony septa, dividing the two cavities. This variation in shape and size can have clinical implications, particularly when dealing with sinus infections or in planning surgical interventions, as the asymmetry can affect the drainage patterns and access to these sinuses. The sphenoidal sinuses are centrally and posteriorly located within the body of the sphenoid bone. Their location behind the nasal cavity and beneath the brain underscores their significance in both the respiratory function and potential impact on neurological structures. As one of the deepest sinuses, the sphenoidal sinuses have a unique relationship with surrounding structures. They are in close proximity to important anatomical features such as the optic nerve, the pituitary gland, and the cavernous sinus. This proximity means that conditions affecting the sphenoidal sinuses can have wide-ranging implications, potentially impacting vision, endocrine function, and vascular structures. The sphenoidal sinuses are characterized by their distinctive location and relationship with surrounding structures. Occupying the anterior half of the body of the sphenoid bone, these sinuses are strategically positioned within the skull, which influences both their function and the implications of their pathologies. Anteriorly, the sphenoidal sinuses are situated behind the nasal cavities. This proximity means that conditions affecting the nasal passages, such as sinusitis, can easily extend into the sphenoidal sinuses. Posteriorly, the sphenoidal sinuses border the posterior cranial fossa. This close relationship with the brain's protective cavity is significant, especially in the context of infections or tumors that may arise within the sinuses. Superiorly, their location beneath both the anterior and middle cranial fossae is particularly noteworthy. This positioning places the sphenoidal sinuses in proximity to vital brain structures and major blood vessels, which can be affected by sinus diseases. For example, sphenoid sinusitis can potentially lead to complications involving the optic nerve or the pituitary gland due to this superior positioning. Inferiorly, below the sinuses lies the nasopharynx. This anatomical relationship is important for the drainage of the sphenoidal sinuses and also for understanding the spread of infections or malignancies from the sinuses to the nasopharynx or vice versa. The sphenoidal sinuses, deeply embedded within the skull, exhibit intricate anatomical relations with several critical structures, making their study essential in various medical fields. The thin anterior wall of the sphenoidal sinus is aligned with the area where the superior and middle nasal conchi are located. The lateral wall of the sphenoidal sinus is adjacent to the apex of the orbit. This proximity to vital elements such as the optic nerve, the cavernous sinus, the internal carotid artery, and several crucial cranial nerves, oculomotor, trochlea, abducens, and the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, underscores the importance of this wall. Conditions affecting the sphenoidal sinus can have direct implications on these structures, potentially leading to serious neurological and ophthalmological consequences. 
The posterior wall of the sphenoidal sinus adjoins the posterior cranial fossa, a location that places it in close proximity to vital brain structures. Above the sphenoidal sinus lies the optic chiasm, the cella turcica, and the pituitary gland. The relationship with these structures is of paramount importance, especially in neurosurgery. Conditions affecting the sphenoidal sinus can impact visual pathways and endocrine function due to this anatomical proximity. The inferior wall of the sphenoidal sinus corresponds to the nasopharynx. And internally, the sphenoidal sinus is divided by the intersinus septum. This septum can vary greatly in its position and thickness among individuals, which can impact surgical access and techniques. Regarding the drainage pathways of the paranasal sinuses, which are crucial for their proper functioning, each sinus has a specific route for the clearance of mucus and debris. The ethmoidal infundibulum plays a central role in these drainage mechanisms. It is an oblique and curved groove located within the ethmoid bone, intricately designed to facilitate efficient drainage. The infundibulum leads into the anterior portion of the hiatus semilunaris, providing a critical opening into the nasal cavity. This pathway is essential for maintaining sinus health, as it allows for the regular clearance of sinus contents, thereby preventing the accumulation of mucus which can lead to infections. The frontal sinus typically utilizes this drainage pathway. It directs its contents into the nasal cavity via the frontal recess. This route is vital for the frontal sinus as it helps in the removal of secretions, playing a key role in preventing sinusitis and other frontal sinus-related conditions. Similarly, the maxillary sinus drains its contents through the maxillary ostium. This ostium also opens into the ethmoidal infundibulum, underscoring the interconnected nature of the sinus drainage system. The anterior ethmoidal cells drain directly into the ethmoidal infundibulum. This direct drainage is critical for the health of the ethmoidal cells, ensuring that they can effectively clear their contents and maintain proper function. Conversely, the sphenoidal sinus and the posterior ethmoidal cells follow a different drainage pathway. They drain into the superior meatus of the nasal cavity, a route that reflects their deeper and more posterior location in the skull. The clinical correlations of the paranasal sinuses encompass a wide range of conditions, reflecting the significance of these structures in both respiratory health and facial anatomy. Rhinitis, characterized by inflammation of the nasal mucosa, is a common condition that can often extend to the mucous membranes of the sinuses, leading to sinusitis. This extension is due to the close anatomical relationship between the nasal passages and the sinus cavities. Sinusitis, whether acute or chronic, significantly impacts an individual's quality of life, causing symptoms like nasal congestion, facial pain, and reduced sense of smell. Dental abscesses represent a primary cause of maxillary sinusitis. This is primarily due to the proximity of the maxillary sinus to the upper teeth. Infections from the roots of the upper teeth can easily spread to the maxillary sinus, leading to inflammation and infection. This correlation highlights the importance of dental health in the prevention and management of sinus-related diseases. The sinuses are prone to various infectious pathologies. Acute sinusitis is often caused by bacterial or viral infections and is characterized by sudden onset of symptoms like nasal congestion, facial pain, and purulent nasal discharge. Chronic sinusitis, on the other hand, may develop due to prolonged inflammation and infection, often leading to more persistent symptoms and requiring more complex management. Inflammatory disorders such as nasal polyps and Killian's polyp can arise within the sinus cavities. Nasal polyps are particularly common in the context of chronic sinusitis. They can exacerbate the condition by further obstructing sinus drainage, leading to a cycle of inflammation and infection. Given their location, the paranasal sinuses are also susceptible to trauma. Traumatic injuries, especially those affecting the facial bones, can lead to complications such as fractures, sinus obstruction, and subsequent infections. The impact of trauma on the sinuses can range from minor to severe, with significant implications for breathing, sense of smell, and even vision. Lastly, the sinuses can be affected by tumoral pathology. Tumors, whether benign or malignant, can develop within the sinuses, presenting unique challenges in diagnosis and treatment. Malignant tumors, although less common, can be particularly serious due to their potential to invade nearby structures and spread to other parts of the body. In conclusion, the paranasal sinuses, comprising air-filled cavities within the craniofacial structure, 
serve multiple essential functions that contribute significantly to various physiological processes and structural integrity. As pneumatic structures embedded within the maxillary, frontal, ethmoid, and sphenoid bones, they play a crucial role in reducing the overall weight of the facial skeleton, thus facilitating more efficient biomechanics of the head and neck. These sinuses originate from the nasal cavities and extend into adjacent bones, strategically located near the nasal cavity and orbits. Each sinus is meticulously lined with respiratory mucosa, which is instrumental not only in humidifying and warming inhaled air but also in trapping and removing particulates and pathogens. This mucosal lining thus serves as a first line of defense against environmental irritants and infectious agents, contributing significantly to respiratory health. In the context of facial traumas, the sinuses act as vital shock absorbers. They help dissipate the force of impacts, thereby protecting crucial structures such as the brain and eyes from potential damage. Furthermore, the paranasal sinuses play a significant role in voice resonance. They enhance the quality and tone of sound, contributing to the unique timbre of an individual's voice. This acoustic function is often overlooked but is essential in the production of speech and vocal expressions. Overall, the paranasal sinuses are not just mere air-filled spaces in the skull, they are complex structures that perform several vital roles, ranging from reducing the weight of the skull to protecting vital sensory organs and aiding in speech.